put it, uh, step you through our Q4 updated asset allocation. It's a publication that um, came out last week. Some of you, I know, um, would have been on, on, on a break, but um, thought we'd just cover that, uh, this just given our, our changes this quarter. Um, it's a big one. We are moving to what we believe to be a, a weaker period uh, for risk assets. Obviously, Michael Knox has touched on this as well with his views around the contracting um, US budget deficit. So we've moved from neutral to underweight Aussie equities. Um, so that contraction, which really is centred around what commodity prices are likely to do in the short term, um, and also higher interest rates, that lag effect that we've talked about is now sort of manifesting into Aussie earnings. So we've seen Aussie FY24 earnings revised down 10% um, since the start of the year, and uh, most of that occurring in the last few months. Um, so we have notched down our, um, un, uh, uh, from neutral to underweight Aussie equities. Also, the turmoil in, in bond markets, we heard from um, Richard this morning, um, driving high that benchmark yield. Um, so just given um, we have seen a, a slight moderation in inflation, yet we have seen uh, long bond yields actually tick up. Uh, we think that will continue to put pressure on, on risk assets and likely uh, real assets as well, so infrastructure and property. So that sees us also drop the, the to an underweight there. Um, we are getting being rewarded, I guess, for being patient. So we have um, topped up our cash balance in anticipation of um, a little bit more weak, weakness in the next three to six months. Um, so what's changed, I guess, um, in, in, in the view overall? Well, look, we, we still know there are some positive factors for the market, hence why we haven't moved to a, a much bigger underweight. So um, the, what we've seen is we, we are nearing the top of the interest rate cycle. Um, inflation is, you know, gradually moderating and moving in the right direction. And growth, particularly in the in the US, has been particularly uh, resilient as well. Also, we've seen that uh, productivity boost that we've seen from all the uh, you know excitement around AI. Um, that's likely to for, uh, to come through. Obviously, Microsoft with its co-pilot as well. So there's there's obviously a lot of things you can point to which um, you know will ultimately support the market. But I think it is what's happened in the middle column that has really concerned us. Most notably, um, it's the magnitude and the velocity of um, the sell-off in, in long bond yields. Um, you know, this increases the, the risk of financial accidents. We saw this with SVB. We saw this with the guilds crisis um, last year as well. So, um, you know, parts that are over leveraged in the market always gets exposed when we see interest rates rise um, this quickly. And given it's such a critical uh, part of, um, you know, the global financial system, long bond yields and, and benchmark um, benchmark interest rates, um, and given how quickly they've moved, um, it does heighten this risk. Um, also, the US political situation, losing the Speaker of the House there, um, you know, political turmoil in the, in the US threatens another uh, potential shutdown of the US government um, in November. So that again poses another uh, another risk. Not that you know there was going to be uh, any new legislation pushed through, but just concerns around a, a government shutdown at a time when markets are jittery, and there's the potential for you know economic data to really be delayed, given how sensitive it is at the moment, which I think just really heightens the risk for for markets. So if we drill down into um, the bond market uh, turmoil, you know it's obviously one of the most stable. Um, of all assets, if you're looking at sort of long, uh, long-term bonds, they were down 7% since mid-September and down 14% since the start of July as well. So what worries us is that um, this is, you know, really only just the beginning. Um, you know, we've heard Michael Knox talk around um, long bond yields needing to be have a seven handle. Um, we are starting to see that move in, in that direction. Now he's saying, look, he doesn't know the time frame to where it moves. Um, it gets to that level, but certainly there are risks in the in the short term. So what we've seen is obviously uh, softer global growth um, and pretty sticky inflation, um, even though it's moving in the right direction. The challenge is you're seeing services inflation, wage price inflation, particularly in the US at five, you know, hover around that sort of five percent. Now, if their inflation target is two percent, you know, with wages pretty sticky at five percent, it's going to be a pretty difficult task. And obviously, um, you know. Uh, a tight labour market and a lot of those uh, wage rises are only just starting to flow through. It's going to take a long time to get back towards that target. 
Um, on top of that, um, as Michael's been talking about the growing US debt pile, um, yeah, coupled with a shortage of really willing participants, you know, the typical uh, buyers of US treasuries have been Saudi Arabia and, and China, and both are running huge um, surpluses, trade surpluses. But instead, what we're seeing is they are running down their um, US Treasury holdings. So I think that, you know, given you are uh, the Fed's stepping out of it, um, you know, allowing bonds to roll off, you've got Saudi Arabia and also China um, also pulling back from buying treasuries, you know, that natural buyer um, in, in suppressing bond yields is, is no longer there as well. So um, that creates uh, a bit a bit more uncertainty for where um, bond yields are likely to go, and we certainly think it's um, um, headed upwards. So, and the fact now we're we're seeing um, you know all defensive asset classes um, really selling off in in tandem. Um, you know, given there's no no places to hide, and that um, you know high bond yields really manifesting in in um, all defensive asset classes. Um, just gives us um, reasons to just be conservative in, in the short term um, until such time as valuations just get too cheap, which you can see from that right-hand side, look, valuations are sort of pushing up there again um, on a global equities basis, or um, central banks um, start to cut rates and, you know, there's no signs of that um, immediately. So, um, as you can see, also the earnings deterioration in Australia um, is starting to, to flow through at a headline level. Um, FY24 earnings is down 10%. Um, you're looking both cyclical and defensive sectors of our economy um, really start to um, really start to feel the pinch from from higher interest rates now. So, um, look, it, we are playing um, defence for for the next three to potentially six months, but. That being said, we are nearing the inflection point for, for risk assets as well. Um, if you think about it, five of the last um, tightening cycles that we've seen um, in the US um, following the, the last um, interest rate rise, five of the last cycles have seen the S&P um, 500 up um, one year later. So um, anywhere between five and uh, 24%. So you know, given most central banks around the world are, are done or, you know, very or one more, one and done um, to, to that top of the rate cycle, we are getting very close to that, that point. Um, and on top of that, we are seeing a, a huge buildup in, in cash. This chart gives you an idea of the money market funds and um, total holdings in money market funds. And as you can see, um, the amount in very liquid cash or cash equivalent has really doubled um, since pre-COVID. So if we do see a contraction pullback in, in risk assets, we dare say um, it's going to be, be bid up pretty quickly, um, just given the weight of cash sitting on the sidelines. Um, sentiment uh, around investors is still very, very weak. Uh, positioning is still very, very defensive. So we don't think it's going to be a prolonged um, uh, drawdown in, in markets. It's going to be like what we've seen over the last um, little while post-COVID. It's going to be pretty sharp and um, that, that cash is going to find its way back um, into the market. So whilst we are cautious, we, 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 we're not great timers of the market. Um, and just given some of the underlying dynamics um, that we're seeing playing out in the market, we do think it's going to be fairly short-lived. Um, so how are we sort of playing this this market? Um, you know, where are the opportunities? Well, we still stick by that small cap call on a relative risk return basis. We do see small caps um, being unloved. You know, we've seen the underperformance of the sector as a whole, both global and Aussie small caps. So on a risk reward basis, that's how you've got to look at it. Um, it's offering a, a really good trade off. Um, the AI productivity boom uh, we say is real. Um, so companies, you know, really focused laser focus on cost cutting, improving productivity in a in a in a uh, inflationary type environment. So that's only going to push more and more companies to explore areas where they can leverage AI. So we do think that that thematic is going to continue. Um, also cyclicals on a risk reward basis, we do think um, is where you need to be looking. Um, you know, the, the market has been positioned very defensively. And we've talked about this before, about it, expensive defensives and the cautious positioning. But we do think cyclicals have been um, overlooked, um, just given some of the risks that are playing out. But again, on a risk reward basis, on a valuation, on a growth, uh, EPS growth perspective, we, we do think that um, offers good value as well. So 
Um, so some of the, the funds that we, we, we talk to here, some of the small cap funds, both Aussie and, and global, um, we, we cover in the publication, but also some fixing interest exposure as well, um, which is also covered in the publication and how we, uh, we think you should be positioned um, in this environment. Thank you.